So what if I told you that I had the ultimate Affinity Publisher video to give to you and then technology said, nope, not today, Dave. So my screen sharing software decided to not record the thing that I wanted to record because I can't go back in time and do the whole thing all over again. I've decided to make a different video for you, still showing you some tips about Affinity Publisher that I've learned in just this process of building this new book project and now I'm gonna share it with you. Let's go! What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist designer based in Southern California and today what we're talking about is Affinity Publisher the, the, getting into the meat of the project that I've been working on except not the thing that I wanted to show you. Uh, technology. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here but I started to build that content marketing playbook and I had the whole thing recorded on screen and I was gonna show you the time lapse and then the screen recording said, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Decided to completely fail on me and I lost it all. And because I've already kind of started the progress on that project, I'm not gonna go back and erase it all just to share it with you again. So instead what I'm gonna do is show you what I've got here and then talk about five things that I've learned in Affinity Publisher. You're gonna want to know this stuff if you're building any kind of project. These are things that you're familiar with if you've used Adobe InDesign and you come over to Affinity Publisher and you'll be like, what? what is going on? Start pulling your hair out, trying to figure out how to do this stuff. So I pulled my own hair out for you so that you don't have to. But before we get into that, please do me a favor, make sure you like this video, subscribe if you haven't done so, hit that bell button, and then share this with your homies. Thank you very much. Okay, fingers crossed, we're gonna jump over to the screen and hopefully the software says it's okay. Okay, so what you see on the screen here is the document and it's not complete. I've got it listed at about 61 pages right now. It's probably gonna be bigger than that. As this project gets built, it's gonna, I just filled it with this many pages because why not? You can see that I've got the basics going. You can see I click through here. I've got a couple of pages built already. Not as many as I would like. We'll talk about that in a second. I've also got a few column or uh, master pages built and uh, I'll talk about those as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the document settings. Document setup. We're based in inches, we got a 300 DPI. I've got this document set up as grayscale because I'm gonna be producing this with Amazon's KDP. And yes, you can produce color documents in Amazon's KDP, but it's significantly more expensive. And so uh, I don't think color is essential to this particular project. I'm gonna have a color cover, of course, but the internal pages, they don't really need that because mostly, this is going to be people inputting their own stuff and maybe their own colors, and so I'm not gonna alter that. I'm not gonna give that. Uh, it's gonna be black and white. Over here in the master pages, I've got four already set up. One is no columns, and this is for like, say, pages, it's title page, which I'll show you in a second. I've got a four column setup because some of my documents, going back to what we are doing here, some of these are four column setups, and some of them are more three column setups. I don't have a three column setup. In fact, I've got a six column setup because sometimes I might want to, you know, adjust a little bit off, maybe kind of cantilever, cantilever. I might want to be doing this with it and I need those extra lines in there. This is an old throwback to my magazine days, so just bear with it. The only page that I've created that's gonna be a consistent thing, like this is the content-oriented master page. I'm gonna have more of these as we go but this was the first one I built. This one was one that I, had, I, it was struggling to figure out even just how to get it work, and that's one of the things we're gonna talk about here in a second, but I just wanted it. This is the first one, there will be more. That's the basics, that's all you need to know. What you want to really know are the five things that I discovered about Affinity Publisher that you're gonna need to know for any future projects you may do in there. Number one is the text frame palette. This was a struggle for me at first. I was trying to figure out how to do certain things, and let me go to, one of these pages here. Let me see if I can find a good page to understand. This is a good one here. This page is an independent page. It's not a master, well, it's got a master page, but this stuff on here is not a master. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Carry all this over just because. I'm not gonna keep any of this. This is actually going away, but just for our purposes, what I was trying to figure out is how do I, you know, it's got up here listed columns, right? I can change this right now. I can come in here and I can change this to all the columns I want. And then there's like this huge gap and I can change that down to, let's see, uh, 0.125 if I wanted. But there were certain aspects like, I couldn't figure out like how do I add, I was trying to figure out how do I add a uh, background to it and that's not, it's not that because that's 
This color over here does not apply to the background because obviously it would already be there. That's actually that this color in the color palette right here is what's applied to the actual text if I were to lay text in there. So I was trying to figure like how, like I, I couldn't figure out at first how to get this to look like this. I couldn't figure out how to get this gray in this background. I had to dig a little bit. So I came down here to the studio and then right there, text frame. You can do it there. Now, if you go up here to this top bar here, it's actually also right there. You can type this, that's typography if you want to do typography. Yeah, that's the, you know, we're not talking about that. This right here, this right here is how this gets done. Now look, watch these changes as I click from one to the next. This has got three columns. You can see it's three columns. And uh, these are the width of the columns and I can actually change the width of the different columns. These are the columns, these are the gutters between the columns. If I wanted to make one column in particular smaller or bigger than the other, then I could do that. That's gonna become an issue later and I'll explain to that in one second. Yeah, so we have all this stuff. Now if we click on this one, you can see I'm down to one column and it's this wide and there's a fill color in there. If I go in there and I change that, you can see I'm doing that. That's one of the things that I had to figure out, like where was this information? Because in InDesign, it's a little bit easier. It's all just in the color palette. And you have like, you can switch between the type or the box. Type, box, type, box, type, box, type, box. I'm gonna change this to uh, art, uh, actually grayscale because we don't need it as seem okay. I'm just gonna keep this over here for just a second because we're gonna get to that in a second. Like I said, I don't need any of this, but pay attention, right? Pay attention to this right here. I don't know if this is actually going to work this way, but I wanna show you something. I'm gonna delete all this. Now this is number two. This is what happens before you begin. That's what I'm calling this. So I'm gonna go back over here to the type. I always forget the name, the frame text tool. So you see that? Do you see that? The last time I opened one of these, it was a single column clear type box or text frame. Anytime I do a new one now, do it again. It's got three columns. This is how Finity Publisher works. When you do something once before you get started, that will automatically apply to the next circumstance. So then if you do another circumstance, so if I change this one and I go back here and let's go back and change it to six and then we'll change this to more of a darker color and then we'll have a stroke of uh, that, right? So then I let go of that and then I go and I bring another one, guess what's gonna happen? So every single time I do something, the next circumstance that I do that thing, that's going to apply. And this was driving me nuts. It's like, why is this happening? And I didn't know it was happening because I didn't have the text frame palette open. What I recommend is get rid of all these. We're actually gonna create a new one and it's gonna be weird, so we're gonna Take this, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna remove the color there. I'm gonna remove the stroke completely. I'm gonna take out all the columns. So now, let's say I wanted to rebuild this page over here. I would take this and I would put that like that. And then I'd put this, drag another one over here and kind of build it like this. I would take this one just, I just, I'm just like option clicking and sharing these and dragging them over. So now I've got, I got one, two, three boxes here, right? This is actually the wrong, uh, this is actually the wrong master page layout, six column layout. Yeah, there we go. Now this makes more sense. So now these two look the same. Words. Let's go ahead and change our style. Where is it? There we go. Oh, where's it all caps? There we go, it's not supposed to be all caps. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change this one to, I'm gonna change it white and we're gonna change it to, I think I had it at 10%, yeah. We got a new one. And again, see, it looks just like the last one I touched. This is what I wanna say, it takes on the last thing. So what I recommend is you build all of the text boxes that you want to build and then you make your changes, then you add your columns, then you add your colors, then you add your insets and all that other stuff as you go. It's a little bit of a pain. It's not intuitive in my personal opinion, but that's again, that's because of my experience working in InDesign versus this. I will adjust as I work with this more. Okay, number three, that is that some of the stuff that carries over from the text frame tool will also carry over to the artistic text tool. 
th this one does, de this one absolutely 100% doesn't make any sense to me. See, Affinity has these two different type tools. They got the text, fr the frame text tool and the artistic text tool. So if I'm creating a text frame and you can see that it's already like that. And let's say I wanted to have a stroke because this thing is going to give me a stroke. Let's say I wanted it to have a stroke. You can see, if I zoom in, I'm going to make that stroke a little bit bigger just so you can see it more pronounced. Okay, we've already established that. The next time I draw another one, it's going to be the exact same thing. The artistic text tool will, if I click on it, it will just lay out text. But look, those same attributes apply. They're still here. The text frame applies to the frame text tool, makes sense, but it also applies to the artistic text tool does not make sense to me. That makes zero, zero sense to me. I don't get it. And it was like, why is this happening? And I couldn't figure it out until I found the text frame. That's it for the text frame. Those are the things that you really need to make sure. Make sure you just have this. When you're building your text frames or your text at all in a document, make sure you have that text frame palette open because otherwise it's just gonna drive you mad. Number four, how to alter a master page on a page that it's been attributed to. I'm altering a page where there's a master page attributed to it, but without adjusting the master across the board. Does that make sense? Allow me to show you. Here we've got the calendar. Let's say for instance that I wanted to adjust the spacing of this particular part of the master or maybe it was this one or maybe I wanted to bring it or move it down or something but just on this particular instance of that master. Now in Adobe InDesign what you used to do is like an option click and what that would do is that would break that element out of the master and then you could alter it. Let's say I had a page number and I didn't want to have a particular page number on that specific page. I could option click or alt click for PC users and that would break it out of the master and then I could delete it or move it or do whatever I wanted with it. That was intuitive for me, but it wasn't, it like, for some reason, like I just couldn't figure it out. Like none of this stuff, it, when I click on it, you can see it's got these, it's got this little X here and none of this stuff is alterable. At least so I thought, and I had to research this to figure out why this was happening. One thing you need to know about master pages is they are layered within every particular page. If I go to this page, there's no layers here because there's nothing on this page yet. But I go here and there's these two layers and, and rather groups, I should say, and this stuff is what's incorporated on the page. If I wanted to alter this, then all I have to do, again, I had to research this. So you go to the master page right here, monthly calendar, right page, and then you right click and then you go edit detached. This one took me a while to figure out. Now you can see this red bar comes up here and it's basically saying, hey, we, we know that you're altering things. When you're done, click finish. If I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna bring this down, let's say I wanted to squat it down and I wanted to add like some sort of little silly little, let's just uh, do a star tool, right? Let's do a couple of those just for fun. So now I've got it looking like this. I click finish. And you would think like, oh, you altered the master page. But no, if I go here to the master page, you see that nothing has changed. Go back here. Nope, wrong one. Back here. And there it is. Let's say I wanted to reapply. Like, ah, I hate that. So I drag that page side and onto that side of the spread. And it goes back. Now, these things are still there. They still exist, right? Because those weren't necessarily master page elements. And I can easily just select all and delete and we're right back to normal again you have to click on that particular page that you want to alter right click edit detached number five let's talk about tables now this layout right here this was built with tables i brought the tables out here so i'm going to show you up close uh, if i can zoom into the right page you can see that i've got the table tool selected and if i just click and drag it's just going to like add more tables more columns more rows infinitely until I stop. I don't necessarily want that. Let's say I just wanted a three by four layout. Now there's five there, but I don't want that. So let's scroll it back and rather I'm not, I'm not letting go, right? So I'm down to four. Like I said, I want it three columns, four rows, just like that. If I hold this bar, it's gonna constrain it. 
if I click on the one internal to that, then it's gonna move it. What you're essentially trying to do is establish how many columns and rows you need from the get and then adjust. Because otherwise what you have to do is you have to go here and like, okay, I don't need that many. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna uh, delete all these and, and then uh, delete that row or column. And it's just, it's just, it's not easy. It's, that's not the way you should do it. Now I'm gonna close this text frame here. One of the things I was struggling with was how to add color to the tables. I couldn't figure it out. Couldn't figure out like, how do I add color to this? Like, what, what am I doing wrong? Like, I just, how? 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 Because it like over here, like, does that do it? That does it. Oh, of course, then that time it worked. Of course, that time it worked. Last time I did this, it didn't work for me. And I guess I was probably doing it wrong. So there, I just proved myself wrong in that circumstance. But go back here to the studio and then down to tables. Then I can adjust this, right? So now I'm just going to use the pointer tool. If I were to fill this whole document, right, like that, then it's gonna, like this one here is going to fill it. This is going to control my stroke for the whole, ah, come on, for my whole document, or at least that document. And I've got it marked here like that. But if, let's say I wanted to just, again, just control what's going here, I select that and I can change this color for that one, or if I just wanna use these, I could change those to a different one, and that's like that. I didn't know this. I mean, I guess I should have assumed there was a table palette, but when I was doing this at first, I was kind of, you know, flying by the seat of my pants trying to figure it out. Yeah, there you go. That's where you find these things. Those are the stumbling blocks that I've had. So the next time I create another table, guess what it's gonna happen here? Oh, I guess it didn't work. It doesn't do the same thing that the text tool does. It doesn't keep doing the same thing all the time. It's slightly frustrating, and I guess the more I work with it, the more I'll figure that out with the text frame tool and the text artistic text tool. It's, oh, that was the, the biggest just like, why is this happening to me? But I got it figured out. I got it figured out, and now you don't have to worry about it. Now you know too. Really long story, shortened down to a little bit of information is this. Sure, you're familiar with InDesign. It does a lot of great things. You're probably not wanting to use InDesign anymore, and you've decided you want to try Affinity Publisher, but you're scared out of your mind because frustrations like this, as much, as these things frustrate me, the answers are always there. I have found every single answer I've ever looked for, either by researching within the program itself or within uh, YouTube videos or whatnot. There's always information to be held, and one of the reasons I'm producing this video is so that you come to me for that information next time. But uh, in the future, if you are trying to figure out what to do here, there's plenty of information here. This program is the real deal. I've already said it before. This program will get you through the projects that you need to get through. You don't have to pay Adobe for the big dollar money program. You can use this program and I guarantee you it's gonna make you satisfied. Are there issues that make things a little bit weird? Sure. But then sometimes in InDesign, same thing happens. All right, that's it. I've talked on long enough. If you have any comments, questions, thoughts, make sure you go down to the comments below. Make sure you ask, share, put some thought down there because people have been sharing information with me and helping me get through this so I don't pull out more hair. Please go down there and contribute if you have something to contribute or ask questions and I'll see if I can answer them. And while you're on your way down there, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so before and hit that bell button because you never want to miss thing. A little bit punchy because this is like the third video. That's six. This is the third video I filmed today. And then make sure you share it with your homies. Now I'm gonna have to go clean up this mess. But you don't have to worry about that. Folks, remember, be good today, be better tomorrow. See ya.